and this is a larger system, this is a subsystem. Okay, now the subsystem is basically our universe and everything in it. So that's you and me and, and uh, everything in the universe. So it deals with the normal, the physical, the objective, and matter. That's what it can deal with. That's what it's made of. Okay, the larger system has to contain also, it's not just normal, but the paranormal, not only the physical, but the non-physical, subjective, mind, and then metaphysics here, theology. All those things are part of the larger reality and an important part. Um, but we have to make this assumption, assume there is a larger reality, and a little later I'll make the assumption that that larger reality is consciousness, but uh, many would say, well, that's a, that's a pretty big assumption. You've really stepped out to assume that there's a larger reality, and some would say it was a, it was a pretty large leap of faith, but I will show you later as we, as we go along that the leap is really not a very big leap. It's a pretty small leap, and it doesn't take much faith to get there. Um, the point to make about this system and a subsystem is that you can never describe the larger system from information that's inside the subsystem. Okay? That, should be, that should make sense to you. When you're in a subsystem or you have the information that's a piece of the larger system, that does not allow you. You don't have enough information to describe what's going on in the larger system because you don't have enough information. If you want to know something about the larger system, the only way to do that is to experience it. Okay? You can't do that from just staying inside the subsystem. You have to get out of that box. Okay, now I have just two assumptions with this. And of course, models and theories always come with assumptions. I have just two. And um, one of them is that consciousness exists and constitutes the larger reality. That's that, that leap we were talking about. The second one is that the, proce the process of evolution exists and directs and encourages change toward more profitable states of being. And I'm talking about a very general um, uh, concept of evolution, not just biological evolution on this planet. Technology evolves. Businesses evolve. Cultures evolve. All sorts of things evolve. Right? But, uh, they exist. They change based on more profitable states, depending on what's profitable. You have a criteria for profitability. Biological systems, that criteria is survival and procreation. For a consciousness system, that criteria is entropy reduction. Now, entropy is a, probably a new word to some of you. It's a, it's a science term. Um, I'll try to make a very simple definition out of it. There's two ways to look at entropy. One is that it is a measure of disorder, okay? A measure of disorder. The other is that if you have, well, let's go back to disorder. If you have high entropy, that means there's more disorder. Okay, if you have low entropy, there's less disorder. Another way to look at it is the amount of energy that's available to do work, to do something, to cause some effect. And if you have low entropy, you have more order and you have energy that can do work, have an effect. If you have high entropy, you have more disorder and you have energy or you have a system that is incapable of making change, of doing work. Okay, an example. Let's uh, take an example of a jug of uh, water. Okay, if you had a jug of water, you could do something with it. Okay, the molecules are all arranged in a very compact way. That's why we have a liquid. You could pour it over a little paddle wheel and make electricity. You could drink it. You could drop it on your foot and break your toe. Wouldn't be a good thing to do, but it has energy. It could make things happen. It can change things as a bottle of water. Pull out the cork, let the water sit, and come back in a month, and there would be no water. The water's gone. It's all evaporated. Now, that system, being the water, being a system, has high entropy. It's dispersed all through the atmosphere. It can't do anything anymore. It can't break your toe. You can't drink it. It does no longer have the energy. You can't generate electricity from it. It no longer has the ability to do work because it has so much disorder in it. Now, that's fundamentally the concept of uh, entropy. Okay, now a theory is valuable and only valuable if it meets four criteria. Okay, and again, all theories have, have assumptions. You don't judge a theory based on what you think of its assumptions. That falls under the heading of closed-minded. You judge a theory based on what that theory is able to do. One, it has to have the fewest possible assumptions. 
If your theory has to have a lot of assumptions to prop it up or to explain it, then it's probably not true, certainly not fundamentally true. Secondly, it has to derive all the old answers. You have to take that theory and derive everything that you know to be true already. Thirdly, it has to derive new answers, it has to have predictions of new things. And lastly, those new answers have to be shown to be correct experimentally. Okay, if you have a theory or a model that does that, then you say that the model and its assumptions ac accurately model reality. Okay? Again, uh, the thought with this slide is that one cannot define the system in terms of the subsystem. To define the system, one must experience it. Simple idea, but many people miss that. Okay, so now I've actually put consciousness in that block and um, I'm going to jump right away to the very bottom of the bottom lines. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go back a little bit after that. Again, we see consciousness as the, as the system. We see uh, our universe as the subsystem, except now instead of the big thing, it's this, this little white spot here. And I did that on purpose because in reality, if I, if I uh, tried to make the sizes on this chart relative to the, uh, or accurate, in terms of the size of information or content, then I'm afraid our, our whole physical universe would be probably less than a pixel and it wouldn't show up on that chart. The point I'm making is that our physical universe within the whole consciousness reality is a very, very tiny, a very small thing. There's much more information and content in the larger reality than there just is in our universe. Okay, now, keep those four things in mind, I said, that makes a, a theory uh, a good one. Um, MBT, which is short for my big toe, again, this is the bottom of the bottom lines. MBT's physical reality model better explains the objective data. It better explains physics, okay? It derives quantum mechanics in the sense that it tells you why quantum mechanics has to be the way it is. Why at the lowest level of, of, um, of particle you end up with, not particle, but a uh, probability distribution. It says that's what you'd have to end up with. It, that makes sense. And it uh, answers the mysteries of physics like entanglement, wave particle duality. Those kinds of things come out as a natural consequence of this theory. And also MBT explains the non-physical, the origins, existence, purpose, mechanics of the non-physical, paranormal, mind, consciousness, metaphysics, philosophy, and even theology. I know that sounds strange, but that is, that is the way it is. Now, the physical reality is best modeled as a virtual digital reality. That's how it's modeled in, in uh, my big toe. And consciousness is best modeled as a digital information system. Okay. We're going to do physics first and then we'll do metaphysics. Physics. The main piece of physics that is probing at the fundamentals of reality right now is quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics basically sees particles as probability distributions. It sees the fundamentals of our existence as a probability distribution. You've probably heard of the uh, double slit experiment. It's kind of a famous thing in physics, but some of you are probably not physicists, so I'll run over it anyway. In a double slit experiment, you have a, you can think of it a board, and it's got two slits in it, and then there's a screen behind it. And you throw a photon at that board, and if, well, and what you get on the screen behind it is a wave pattern. A wave pattern is a series of, of light that's a bright light a, or a, a little bright light in the center and then from either side of the center there's dark and then you get a little bright spot and dark and bright spot and you have these spots. That's a wave pattern. Okay, and why do you get a wave pattern?